Welcome everybody to the director's commentary of Yule Log 2012. I am the writer and director of Yule Log 2012, Diego Montoya. And with me as always is my producer. Ron Bloom, executive producer. Ron and I have been working together forever. We felt like we could really bring a new energy to, um, to this production. Yeah, when I first met Diego, I think we, we bonded instantly because we were just like, listen, we're not going to let anything hold us back. We're not going to let anything, we're not going to let fear drive us. And uh, that actually is why this particular project is so special because everyone was afraid of, of taking on a project like this. No one had the guts to try it, which I think is what really initially drove us to want to, to do this. It's just, it scared the hell out of us. And I think that's exciting. That's, that makes exciting work. It does. It's, it's what drives me on a daily basis. And one of the major problems that we came across was the casting process, which is why we have our casting director with us, Mr. Casper Blake. Uh, when Ron called me about the casting of, of this particular project, I knew that we were going to have to keep the field wide open, uh, especially once he, uh, he told me that Diego was attached. Uh, uh, the field, the playing field for the wood was wide open. We were seeing all kinds of wood. Um, I, I don't believe there was a type of wood that, that we turned down. It was, it was a very long and, and, and tedious. It was a long and hard process and there was not a day that Casper and I did not surround ourselves with wood. I remember calling Casper initially and just being like, Casper, I need you to give me wood. And that's exactly what he did. On a daily basis. We there, had the most bizarre requests and Casper came through each and every time. There, there were times when, when I would wake up in the morning and only after having maybe two hours sleep uh, and, and just ready for another, another long, hard day of, of dealing with wood constantly. Um, and and I, I would try to, to categorize, you know, I, I'm having uh, balsa wood on one day, uh, pine on another day, hardwoods. I try to keep mostly hardwoods at first and then we, we ended up having to deal with the softwoods. And uh, initially nobody really likes soft woods. I mean pine, plywood, you know, all the conifers, no one really respects them or likes them. But you know what, we, we decided to keep an open mind. So we, we sort of were tossing around some ideas. You know what, let's think outside the box. And then Casper blew us away with his, uh, with his choice of particle board. Right, I, th I thought we were going to really be able to go with the particle board too. And, and, uh, um, but there was an issue uh, with the uh, air quality uh, in, in burning the particle board. We, d we did not expect, we did not expect. But uh, the glue proved to be quite toxic in our test shoots. You know, Ron ended up in the hospital for a couple days, but you know, he recovered, thankfully, of course. Yes. Um, yes. But you know, he's still on an inhaler and will occasionally have to bring an iron lung with him to set. Well, listen, uh, the, this, this business is not for the weak. I mean, this is, this is a tough business. I mean, it's, it's the most dangerous industry in the entire world. And if you're not ready to, to commit to that and live that kind of lifestyle, then you don't bother getting involved in this because these projects such as these are, I mean, they're not a joke. I mean, this is, this is, this is real. This is, this is life. This is capturing of life. This is, this is real. Right. After Ron ended up in the hospital, I, th I thought for sure we were going to have to settle on a soft wood. But then one morning I come into my office and there's this hard wood that just gets my attention and I could send the rest of them all home. Yeah, the choice was obvious at that point. We went with a, with a solid oak. Uh, 